I want to talk about the United documentary first. A documentary of Manchester United and the city itself, narrated by Eric Cantona, legend, uh, featuring United legends. The star power for this documentary, by the way, is unreal. Beckham, Cole, Sheridan, the current Man United manager, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, I just basically want to ask, <clears throat> was this actually filmed during the pandemic, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a really, really hard film to make. Yeah. I mean, I thought the plan was hard, but... I mean, there, at least it wasn't a pandemic. So the United Way was, um, it was an interesting project, the evolution of it, but really I wanted to work with Eric. You know, uh, Eric is something, on, he's on another level for me. Mm. And um, Man United's story, <laughs> I didn't grow up liking Man United, and I've said that before. <laughs> But, you know, I remember sort of pitching it and saying everybody has a relationship with Man United, whether you're a fan or not, you love yeah. them or hate them, you just have a relationship with them because they've either given you moments of absolute joy or absolute misery in your life. And I can say that, you know, being a Sheffield Wednesday fan, I'm sure you guys can as well. Um, so they, they feel sort of socially really relevant. And, you know, I'm, I'm often quite interested in the sort of... Um, the sort of fabric that's around a sporting story and I feel like Manchester is a really interesting city mm. so when I could pitch that to Eric and he was you know the third sort of part of that spoke so to speak um you know the club the city and then Eric and he he was really on board with that and I just wanted to do something a bit different with Eric and I felt like we could you know and we had lots of ideas that in the end we could never fulfill because of the pandemic, unfortunately. And that's why it was a really difficult film to put together, but we had a deadline and that deadline, I was going to say, did, did, wasn't going to shift. It did move back a couple of months, but it wasn't going to shift, you know, like a year and a half, you know, if we were making it now, we could be doing all sorts of other things with that film. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, it was a great film to put together in many ways because the just knowing that you've got Eric on board and then going out and getting these names and into you know I did sort of like 50 interviews and I made the choice that people are just going to talk within their period so I don't want to hear David Beckham talk about Ron Atkinson I just want him to talk about the period he was in so everyone appears along this timeline they come in and out come in and out come in and out and um and then you've got Eric underpinning it and uh yeah it was you know, Sky were on board early and they were fantastic to work with. And uh yeah, it was it was a relief to get it to get it out though. It was a relief to get it done and um mm. I'm really proud of it Gary, for different reasons that film. Gary Neville's still harboring a bit of a grudge for the wind up, is that why it wasn't in it? <laughs> Cause, cause on, no. <laughs> no. You might have read between the lines there. That's just um it's probably mm. a, a story. There is a story there. I'm not sure mm. I'm ready. I like Gary Neville, but um, he has his own media company. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that he struggles to share the, the marketplace, particularly with little guys like Ad Hoc Films. So um, there was a bit of a, yeah, there's a bit of an issue with Gary at one point. Um, he's not in the film. That's a pity. But, you know, his mate Beckham is. Is that is Alex Ferguson? Do you try and get him on board? Um, yeah, uh, Alex Ferguson. Like it, that was just uh, continued no because he was doing his film at the time. Yeah, of course. Um, oh yes, I forgot that. I said to on. I said to Eric, how do you feel about him not doing your film? And Eric was very um, philosophical about it, shall we say? Yeah. And I said, you know, are you going to do Alex's film? And he said, yeah, of course. And I sort of. I spoke to the producers, so, you know, Eric's doing Sir Alex's film, you not think, anyway, that was it. The decision from Sir Alex was not to do Eric's film, but Eric was, he's, he's such a, such a fantastic human being, Eric Cantona. Mm. He, mm. he wouldn't have seen that as a reason to not do Sir Alex's film. And no, I really respect that. Yeah. And actually, do you know what? I, I, I respect people's decision 
to appear or not to appear and it sounds like i don't but i really do i you know people have different reasons and you have to you can't you're not entitled in this industry um i find it extraordinarily i always find it surprising when people say yeah i'll do that film you know with sylvester sloan mike tyson sugar a leonard in my boxing film on duran every time someone said yes i was like what really you're gonna be in our film you know so mm. uh, that feeling never goes away so everybody has their right to say yes or no and i respect that i just want to touch on ronaldo just because of him let's go last night and i feel like i mean Woo! I want to ask you both, do you feel that the criticism that he's been receiving uh, this season is fair? Or are you are, basically, are you saying it's other players' fault as well? I, I, we're going to oh. dig in deep in the present, Man United, now. Um, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, for this answer, to this, but I, I, I don't care. Um, I, I am who I am, and I say what I say. I, I think he's a problem. I think he's a problem within a bigger problem. I mm -hmm. don't think he's the only problem. He's not the only problem. No, well, when when, when um, before the news broke that we were going to say that Ronaldo was coming back, there was like murmurs, and I got posed a question, um, and it was, would I swap Rob Martial for, for Ronaldo? And at the time, I said, no, no, I wouldn't. I want something for Ronaldo. Which when he, when I say that out loud to a lot, to probably a lot of the listeners now sounds a bit crazy, but why, why would I want to bring like I remember Ronaldo tearing it down the touchline, like like just absolutely turning people inside out and, and like being an absolute menace and just like riveting and, and thrilling and, and all the all the, the objectives you can think of it was it was just brilliant to watch. That's yeah. what I remember Ronaldo from. And I d I didn't want to that the memories that I've got of Ronaldo, I didn't want them to be like tarnished or, or like um you know sort of stained in any way because I, I knew he's not the player that he once was. And I wouldn't have swapped Ronaldo for Martial for the simple fact that well at the time when it was happening we, we weren't creating enough chances for our strikers as it was. Last season, we were not creating enough chances for Cavani. So, no. all right, so you're going to swap, you're going to swap Ronaldo for Cavani. Uh, you're going to bring Ronaldo in, but it doesn't like, it doesn't matter. You could bring Pele back, bring Maradona back, like bring any, any striker back, bring our nine back. If you're not creating, if you're not creating chances for your strikers, then what's the point in having them? They're only as good as the service that they get in. Yeah. So at the time when I said, I want to swap Ronaldo for Martial, that's not me disrespecting Ronaldo and saying that Martial's better than him. I wasn't saying that. What I'm saying is, the pe the people, the, the, the forwards that we've got now are starving. Now, if, if we had the, the right environment for Ronaldo to thrive, where we were creating consistent, clear-cut chances, that's a different conversation then. We're having a different conversation. Now, don't get me wrong, when the, when the news broke, of course, I got lost in nostalgia and my head went and I was buzzing like probably every other United fan. I was very happy that it came back. It was it was, it was was quite emotional. Do you know what I mean? It, I, don't, you know, I, I couldn't believe we were back. But it, it, it didn't take long to start to see that, like, look, he's not the player that he once was. And and, it, and that's no disrespect on his name. And, I don't, and I'm not having a go at him. You're like, time waits for no man. It doesn't wait for Messi. It doesn't wait for Ronaldo. You know, his mind's trying to do things that his body just can't do anymore. That they're, they're not marrying up, and he has look. He's a large. Re he's, I would say he's the largest reason why we're in, why we're through the Champions League group campaign. Yeah, he's a he had heavy contribution in that. Um, but I've got to be honest. Like his overall play, I, I think it leaves a lot to be desired. He's still trying to do all these tricks and that, and it's a bit cringy now because. And again, I don't mean this with any disrespect at all, but he's it, just not that guy anymore. And it's not helped. This is where I do defend him. It's not helped with the players that is that is surrounding him. He's not surrounded by a functioning team. Like he's, he's got players around him that, with all due respect, some them they're not good enough. That it's not been. It's just not been clicking this season. So like you know, if you, if Ronaldo had gone to City, this we won't be having this conversation. Like if we were City, thirty goals, like, easily oh, twenty five thirty in a season, unlimited service him. he would receive easily. Exactly. Chances at United come at a premium. They don't, no. is it? I, I, chance, I, I, I chance, couldn't agree chance. more. So, like, look at last night, more. Sporting. They were, I think they were falling up at half time against Sporting Lisbon. So, that, that, that City is a well City is a well oiled machine. And, and I've, no, I've no doubt that if he'd have been used as a poacher, nothing else, and Pep said to him, listen, I just want you around the 18 yard box, six yard box. I want you there. Don't get involved in build up play. Stay right up front. We'll get the ball to you. If he would have done that, he'd be fine. The problem is, if you notice the United a lot of times, he's coming deep to get the ball. And yeah. he's just not got it in him anymore for, for the build-up play. Like, his touch isn't where it used to be. His, um, 
you know, t- turn on the ball. He can't turn like he used to. And, and again, I'm not having a go at him. It's just his age. Like he's just his, his legs are not what they used to be. And he can see the pain in his face sometimes. And I do feel a bit sorry for him because, like, I look, I'm 38, and I still feel like a kid in sign. I still feel like I've got pitch with it. Like I play Sunday League, mate, and I still feel like I can do do a job. But these lads that are like 21, 22, 23, like they, they just they run rings around me because I'm just I, I can't run like that anymore. Now I'm not I'm not comparing myself to Ronaldo. Like please yeah, don't yeah, take yeah. this out of context. <laughs> I'm just making the point that I'm 38 and I think he's 37. So in terms of about my body feels, look, I've, I know my body's probably nowhere near the level of fitness that he is mm-hmm. at all because he has a ridiculous disciplined uh, training regime. I appreciate that, but still, like you know, biology is biology, and um, he, 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 he can see when you're watching him play, he's just not that guy anymore. And I think for the next next manager that comes in. Like Ronaldo, like if you look, if Ronaldo's in your team, I feel like you, you, you almost feel obliged that you've got to play him because it's Ronaldo and it? it's like CR7, and it's the goat. Well, he's not, he's not my goat. I know that's going to upset a lot of United fans. My goat's Messer, just just purely oh. on the way he plays oh, the game. Really? See, this is where we, we're, we're really? about to disagree. Me and Ryan, we love Ronaldo, really? but we're not going to have that debate. <laughs> Messi, Ronaldo, no, yeah, me, Messi, Messi's always been my goat. I just prefer the way he plays the game. Um, that, but that's not me disrespecting Ronaldo. Like, no. we're talking, if someone says to me, Ronaldo's the goat. I ain't gonna like lose my shit over it. And the same way, if, if I say someone messes my goat, I won't expect them to lose their shit over it. Like we're talking like margins here, not not, not you know, not 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 the Grand the Grand Canyon, literally no, margin. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I, 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 I agree. I do agree though. Like, I think I, I do think it's unfair that he's getting a lot of the blame, but there is bigger problems within the club. Well, if I can just sport. touch on. Well, like, George, if I'm yeah, just touching what I was about Ronaldo, if I'm yeah. just touch on this, well, what, what Johnny was saying, I agree with probably 70% of it. Um, what I would say, uh, and obviously it's only my opinion, is that when he was mentioning, for example, would you bring Ronaldo in for Martial or let's say, for example, Rashford or Cavani or Greenwood, dare I say it, whoever else would be up front for Man United. I, I think there is a difference. And I know he's 37, 38, but I think because our squad is not the 94 squad, it's not the 99 squad, it's not the 2006 squad, it's it's not good enough. And Ronaldo is still a player that can just do something out of absolutely nothing. Even the game yesterday, he just got the ball, skipped past one player and smashed the shot straight in the, right, in the corner he of the goal. Like, me, he actually surprised me yesterday when he did that. I was like, yeah, I like, and that's, that. why, that's why for me, like, I, I get what you mean, Johnny, completely. And, you know, you're absolutely right. He's showing signs of slowing down for sure. And he's older now and he's not as fast and whatnot. But, the Champions League, I think you touched on him being the main reason for us being through. I think he's the sole reason we're through. I mean, he pulled some things out of the bag when that team wasn't performing. And you look at Ronaldo of old, and I know obviously you're saying he's declining, and he is, but you're looking at Ronaldo, who's getting assists from Luka Modric, Tony Cruz, Gareth Bale, Karen Benzema, or Carlos Tevez, Berbatov, Rooney. Well, that's where, that's where we're coming yeah. to the wider team. And that's where I just you know, You're now looking at McFred. I mean, McFred. I mean, why are we playing Fred or Scott McTominay in our midfield? I mean, and then why? McFred will come up. Well, it is McFred, isn't it? Because they you are one to, player. I'll They're tell you now. I'll, I'll tell you. CDM. I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you the names that I keep in this team. The rest of that, and I'm not. This is not. I'm not capping here on my son's life. These are the only players I keep. Right? Duran, yeah. De Gea. Yeah. yeah. Bruno. None. None at fullbacks. None of the fullbacks. Maguire's gone. They're all gone. They're not. They're not. They're not at the level. They're not at the level. They're gone. So De Gea. For um, Donny van der Beek. Bruno, right? I see. I don't rate Bruno like everyone else. Does. I don't rate him. Oh, that's uh, a we'll, get, take. we'll get into Bruno. We'll get into it. But we'll get into it. But I, I, I'll tell no, you. finish the squad, uh, and then I want to hear it. But yeah, yeah finish the squad, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah so cool. Dehaer, Varan, um, De Donny, Pogba. Um, I would have Bruno on the bench. Um, Donny, Pogba, Bruno, Sancho. And yeah, Jaden's improved a lot recently. I've seen Jaden's doing well now. Oh, Jaden Sancho, he's he's become a joy to watch that lad. With uh, keep you up, keep you up for your plan, the um, the kind of seminal uh, football documentary, I think. How did that come about? Was it something that you seeked actively, or did it kind of fall onto you? And, and did you, no. you did seek it? Did you, did you look at that at chaotic? Yeah, n- not at all. Um, actually, that fell, it didn't fall on my lap. I got, I got a call about, about this job, about this documentary from another company, actually. And this other company were doing commercial work for um, 
the ArcelorMittal Corporation, of which, you know, yeah. um, you know, Lakshmi Mittal. So I went to see them and I sort of pitched what I would do with this QPR documentary. As This was when the money had just come in and yeah. I didn't know anything about what they, what agreements they had or anything. And then they said, well, okay, uh, yeah, sort of so we don't lose you onto another job because we think you might be quite good for this one. We'll give you some some little uh, so I did some commercials for the, the Mittal stuff, and then this got up and running, and um, it was the first season, and it was a disaster. And that the guys that had sort of done the deal with QPR um, wanted to just go back to doing the commercial work with the Mittals. They weren't really well, weren't very well versed in doing documentary, and I'd got my teeth into it by that point, and. Um, so after the first season, the club, when I say the club, really, I'm talking Flavio, Bernie, Mittal, all said, well, that was kind of fun to film a year. It was an unmitigated disaster. Let's bin everything, you know, wash our hands of it and walk away. And the production company said, yep, yeah, we're, we're with you on that. And I said, no. And um, the production company said, well, we're not you know, we're, we're done with it. They're clearly not going to put any more money in, basically, was their issue. And I said, well, I've got a lot of great footage here. I still believe in this. You don't make a great story, you know, it, you don't get promoted just in your first season. It's very unlikely, but, you know, there's a story here. And um, I said, I'll take it on. And that was then presented. I spoke to Amit about that. And Amit was, you know, Amit's not stupid. He said, well, look, if you're prepared to just take this on on your own, on your own, dime basically will still allow you accreditation to the stadium you can have access to the training ground i'll talk to flavio i think flavio was pretty like no i don't want it i don't want it and in the end amit sort of said well i want it and it's not costing a penny what have you got to lose so then i sort of kept going i always remember saying like just keep keep the pulse alive you know keep it alive don't kill yeah. it it did get killed several times i'm not gonna lie and that wasn't that was probably the the, the lesser of the hurdles we faced over the next two or three years but kept it going so I sort of picked up other bits of work along the way to subsidize continuing it and then um, when when things started to turn around you know I could have that conversation with the board and you know then they, they all started to see themselves as investors in the film suddenly so people were clamoring to invest a little bit more it wasn't big money but it was enough just to keep me filming and to finish it and that's how it got done really in the end and um i remember saying to amit and him saying to me we had a we had a meeting one day and it was during that last season and again there's no guarantees but they were doing really well and i said look whatever happens i can't do any more on this you know i, I can't do another i can't do another year on this and he said no i don't want us to do another year on this you know i'm starting to think that you're bad luck matt and um, I'm starting to think that, you know, I can't go through just this obsession for another year. It, it, it burnt me out. So it was kind of like all or nothing to coin a, yeah, to quote another title from another documentary. But it really was all or nothing for us at that point. And um, yeah, it was an amazing ending for, for so many reasons. You can imagine just personally what a, what a, a relief it was. <laughs>